So one of the biggest challenges uh, that policy as code or compliance as code solves is the challenge of too much automation, almost. It's like uh, you want to automate as much as possible, but the, the example I usually give is that uh, you know, when you when you ask to create five thousand servers, if you had to fill in an order form that someone actually looked at, they would they would be like, "This is probably wrong." No, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> but when you tell a machine to create five thousand servers for you, it just goes ahead and does it, and and that could be really an expensive mistake. And and so policies code, compliance as code, is a way to actually codify these like hard limits, uh, those extreme levels, but also more nuanced limits, like. Uh, do you have examples, I guess, of, of policy, good policy as code? Yeah, I mean, I think there's almost like three categories of policy as code, which is like operational best practice, like security type controls, and then like compliance type controls. So I think in each of those categories, you can see examples of like operational best practice might be like, don't deploy 5,000 nodes, right? But it might also be like, don't deploy after 5 p.m. on Friday, where right. there's no compliance rule that says don't, but just don't do it, don't deploy it on a weekend. Versus like security best practice is probably like, you know, good examples like don't open the firewall to allow all traffic. And compliance requirement might be, you know, the PCI database is only accessible in the PCI network zone right. type and of a thing. And there's actually a fourth use case, that, uh, the education use case, which I actually think is really cool, mm. um, which is creating policies which are totally fine, but help educate the user that you requested this type of instance, but this type of instance is usually better uh, for your workloads or something. And you could actually use these policies that don't fail the operation to teach more junior people how better to use infrastructure, which uh, is a really cool use case. The sort of yeah nudging people into the right behavior rather mm -hmm. than saying just like, no. Right. Yeah, because I think otherwise what you like what we see all the time is it's just like, here's an endless series of like text to read about. Like, don't use this instance type, do this thing. Like, don't forget this thing. But it's like, if you have it as policy as code, then the system sort of nudges you the right way and at least you don't have to like read these massive tomes and try and remember everything. This is what yeah. kind of tells you, by the way, use this other instance type. Yeah, policy as code doesn't have to be the department of no. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think that actually, the department of no, I think, brings up a good point of like, how does it simplify for most people? Which is, otherwise what you see if you don't have policy as code is it's people as policy. Right? Yeah. Is it's like file a ticket and then wait for someone to manually go through your change and review it and then wait, please wait days, weeks, months. Versus when it's policy as code, it's the same control ultimately, but it'll be, you know, please wait three seconds, and then the engine comes back and says yes or no, right? So I think that's another big piece of it. And it's interesting because it's easier to get the no feedback from a machine than it is from a person. And so you kind of want the, the machine to actually automatically tell you this is out of compliance or something because it's an easier, for some reason, it's an easier piece of feedback to take. It's not a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's like an email or something. Yeah. yeah.